So right from the start, you have 30 gadgets you can just use for your projects. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Pak, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. So Korg released Gadget for MacBook and there have been just a slight bit of confusion on the internet about this release. So I thought I'd make this comparison video showing you the differences between Core Gadget for iOS and Core Gadget for MacBook. And also why I find them to be so similar that it really doesn't matter if you watch tutorials for Core Gadget for iOS or Core Gadget for MacBook. You'll get it either way. Right, so one of the complaints about this has been the price point of the MacBook version. But there's a reason for this. You get a lot of value for those money. You get a lot of value for that money. And we're going to start by opening up the gadget list here on my iPad Pro. So I'm running gadget on my iPad Pro. And here you can see the different gadgets. Now the thing is, when you purchase gadget on iOS and you get like 15, 16 or 17 gadgets or something like that, then there are in-app purchases like Bilbao, Abu Dhabi, Kamata, Madrid. The list goes on. There's a lot of gadgets you can expand with. As you can see, I still don't have the gadgets from Korg module or the Darwin gadget from Korg IM1. So what does this look like on the MacBook version? Okay, so right now we're inside the MacBook version and I'm going to open up the gadget list and show you something. Look really closely. Can you see any in-app purchases? Because I sure can't. You see, when you get the MacBook version of Core Gadget, then you get 30 gadgets all at once. No in-app purchases. There will be 31. It even says so on their website because right now there is one gadget missing. Milpitas. Milpitas? Mil... Milpitas. So right from the start, you have 30 gadgets you can just use for your projects. Pretty awesome, isn't it? The next thing is that you can now load the gadgets into other DAWs in AU format, VSD format, AAX format, and in a future update, there will be NKS formats too. It says so on their website. Now that's fun, isn't it? And it also makes me think of Propellerhead's Reason. I mean, come on, that is awesome. You can find a full compatibility list for other DAWs if you want to use your gadgets in them over at the Korg website. It looks like this and, well, you can see all the supported DAWs right here. Remember that it has to be 64-bit systems. So the price point for Core Gadget on Mac isn't that unreasonable, is it? Especially not if you're getting it during the sale, which will end quite soon. Okay, so apart from the in-app purchases and the ability to use the gadgets inside other DAWs, what other things are different about these versions? Well, here in the Mac version, you can find these minus and plus buttons, and these are resizing buttons. So when pressing the minus sign, gadget gets sized smaller. And when pressing the plus sign, it gets sized bigger. Am I being grammatically incorrect here? Another thing about the viewing mode is that you got, well, you got more viewing modes. So you can see these three buttons right here. And right now I've got this one chosen. And so it's only showing the piano roll and the mixer with the gadgets in them. When I press this one, we will have a split view and we will see the gadget pop in from the right. And if we press this one, then only the gadget will pop into view and it will look more like it does on iOS. And when you're in the split mode, you can also remove the gadget by pressing this one. And this one is for removing the mixer so you only have the piano roll or the song list basically. This is the only new thing with the viewing mode plus the resizing buttons on the Mac version. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same. I hope this clarifies the differences and the similarities between Core Gadget for iOS and Core Gadget for Mac. Now, have a look at this. This is me running the same project synced through Ableton Link on my iPhone 6S, my iPad Pro, and on the MacBook. And that is pretty awesome. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very very much appreciated. I've also got a, a Patreon account, a Patreon page. So if you want to support creativity and good content here on YouTube, then I suggest you go sign up on Patreon. Right now, I have this series of six episodes in where I'm going through all the steps I had to take in order to make and produce the Audiobus 3 launch videos. I'm the guy that they hired to do those videos. So there's a series at Patreon right now that you can watch if you join up. You'll be able to take part and hear and 
see all of the details about that project and actually making professional looking product videos. Now, if that isn't your cup of tea, if you don't wanna do Patreon, then you can always share my videos, press the thumbs up if you think my videos deserve it. And uh, uh, yeah, if you decide to subscribe, then don't forget to click in that little bell thing that pops up right beside the subscription button and you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Thank you.